Pachori sir, good morning. If uh, yeah, uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Vivek Ji. Am I audible? Yes, 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 sir. sir. Okay. You are audible, sir. You are audible, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. So, with uh, your permission, uh, may 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 we start our session, sir? Yes, yes, please. So thank you, uh, all the participants. Welcome again. This is the final day and the final session of this one week long FDP supported by the Tal AICT scheme. I'm very pleased to have today session expert or resource person, Dr. R.B. Pachori, sir. He is a professor from Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Indore. He has completed uh, his PhD in uh, uh, from uh, IIT Kanpur and also his PG MTech from IIT Kanpur. I, I take this opportunity, sir, to congratulate you to just you recently cross the 10,000 citations. <laughs> really, really, it's a great achievement and. Uh, uh, all the participant, you may be very happy to know that he always scored top 2% scientist that is the list uh, published by the Stanford University. So it is a very great uh, to the India to our nation also. Sir. And uh, uh, personally, uh, he's so kind. He always give all the support, all the blessing to me to go ahead. And he has very known uh, uh, personality in the, in the area of biomedical science, how to apply AI, ML, DL in the signals and the sensors you install on the bodies. So I hope the season is going to be very uh, research oriented. Also, a lot of open problem uh, will be there though. So if you are the faculty member and the PhD scholars or the participant, maybe get benefited. So. Sir, I take this opportunity to invite you and take up the session so that uh, participants may uh, improve their knowledge in the field, sir. You may start, sir, please. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Vivek ji, uh, for a nice introduction. And uh, it is my great pleasure to be part of this uh, faculty development program. And thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, let me share my slides. Yes, sir, please, sir. Are you able to see slides? Yes, sir. It is a, the, the slides are very visible. Sir, please. Oh. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, today's talk will be uh, focused on ML machine learning based frameworks for brain signal classification. So this machine learning term uh, you must have seen in the previous days of this uh, symposium that actually uh, a lot of uh, uh, work is going on and uh, you have also seen many methodologies and various applications of machine learning and machine learning a term is actually very uh, common term and these days uh, it is difficult to find any area of science and uh, engineering or technology where this, uh, this term has not touched everywhere machine learning you will find and uh, this is uh, one of the main uh, actually reason uh, uh, people are going towards automation everything whatever we have this like manual observations manual processing manual analysis, they are now replaced by the machine learning based frameworks. So we have also actually last few years, we have developed some uh, signal processing uh, based method together with machine learning techniques. And uh, we have come up with some new frameworks which can be used for analysis and classification of electroencephalogram EEG signals. And uh, they can be used for diagnosis of various brain related disorders. So for example, uh, epilepsy and uh, sleep stages classification and emotion detection. So these all these applications uh, will be explained in this talk. And uh, before also starting this talk, we will also see uh, just overview of the machine learning. And then uh, uh, we'll also see uh, signal processing, uh, like advanced signal processing techniques. And then together with machine learning techniques, uh, then uh, we will see these developed systems, intelligent systems, expert systems. Uh, which can be used uh, to detect uh, these abnormal EEG signals in an automated manner. So, 
with this background let us start this talk so this is the overview of this uh, uh, presentation first we will see introduction of machine learning uh, then uh, we will see various applications of machine learning uh, for eeg signal analysis and uh, which also actually uh, includes uh, empirical mode decomposition based features for analysis of normal and seizure eeg signals classification of seizure and non seizure eeg signals and detection of epileptic seizures and after that this time frequency image based features uh, for classification of sleep stages will be explained and this is also actually one of the important domain these days uh, there is a lot of interest in the deep learning uh, or convolutional neural network where directly we use signal as in the form of image and then how to convert the signal in form of image that actually is time frequency domain gives us an opportunity where this one dimensional signal can be converted into two dimensional image and directly image can be used as an input and that you don't need to extract features this uh, classification process itself will determine the features and pro process it. so that in that way this time frequency domain also that will be highlighted in this presentation uh, also can be used uh, for uh, classification using this advanced machine learning methods and uh, which also can be studied for various biomedical signals and after that multivalent decomposition based features uh, for human emotion classification uh, will be explained and in the end conclusion will be uh, provided so machine learning actually uh, it is a very uh, common term and uh, that you see learning is there and uh, even our life human actually in our life also we always learn and that actually so life is a uh, school of learning that, that is saying so similarly this uh, uh, whatever we learn whatever we do we perform task based on the learning same thing actually we want to do with the machines so that is a machine learning term has come and uh, uh, if you see in real life uh, like uh, our in families uh, for example like uh, mother mother is a first teacher and this uh, newborn baby uh, he or she learns many things uh, or most of the things from mother mother tells what is the uh, what is like she introduces uh, to the various uh, family members or family members of the family and uh, that this person is uncle or his auntie or this is the nephew niece all these uh, relations uh, she introduces and after some time this baby actually doesn't ask mother and uh, he learns or he or she learns and uh, then they trend to the system and then actually automatically identify that is his uncle or is a uh, or uh, anti or what are the different different lessons so similarly uh, this actually this machine learning is also uh, it is one kind of actually umbrella term uh, where we have set of techniques and set of tools uh, which can help computers or machines to learn and adapt on their own like uh, you, we do humans do and that is actually the same thing you want to have with the machines and uh, according to herbert simon Uh, learning is any process by which system improves performance from experience that is so uh, you have experience and then then you learn better so that is actually uh, based on the sometimes uh, machine learning techniques they also use this feedback uh, whatever is based on the output output also be uh, actually we take some experience and based on that we perform the this learning so there are various applications of machine learning uh, and uh, Uh, this everything uh, is going towards automation, and uh, uh, you will not find any area where machine learning is not applied. So, like uh, uh, for example, this Dr. Vivek is organizing this uh, this faculty development program. Uh, maybe for example, like uh, one specific department. But this is machine learning is so actually general. Uh, even it can be. Uh, for entire triple IT NRI, for this this can be considered like triple IT NRI can also organize this. So this is not just like the department activity these days machine learning. It has gone for institute level activity. Even entire I P also can organize a faculty development program machine learning. Even this uh, science college, art college, engineering college, medical colleges, uh, everybody is trying to use machine learning. So its applications, if you see. Uh, it is actually it is it is a lot of applications, and the major applications include uh, this automated health diagnosis systems, uh, product recommendations, image recognition, sentiment analysis, 
fraud detection and banking domain language translation and also uh, uh, this is email spam and malware filtering self driving cars are coming these days driverless cars are coming uh, just uh, cars then you need various signals or an automated decision has to be taken in order to uh, use these car in order to navigate these cars so uh, there is a lot of actually speech recognition uh, uh, if you see these doors they are controlled with the speech face recognition these mobiles are coming these they just based on the face they it will go open so these are the uh, uh, extracting features performing classification performing identification these are very important parts for the machine learning so machine learning when you see there are two important parts one is training and second one is testing so the observations in the training set uh, from the experience that the algorithm uses uh, to learn that is actually known as training and the testing set uh, this is the, is the set of observations uh, which are used to evaluate the performance of the model uh, based on the performance metric so during training uh, we actually perform the training to the system system learns understand and then become efficient and testing purpose uh, during testing phase we check it so for example like uh, indian army if you see somebody joins indian army and then uh, this indian army they give that per per particular person uh, that is good training set of training and after training uh, we assume that this person is now trained now is suitable for indian army and then actually he perform the testing in that life so in that way same thing is actually happens in the machine learning a kind of framework and there are uh, based on the data uh, or nature of the data sometimes data is known sometimes is unknown sometimes partial information known so in that way this machine learning algorithms can be classified to three classes uh, supervised and supervised reinforcement learning and supervised we know the what is the actually output like uh, for example this uh, seizure non seizure case that eeg signals so doctors will tell us this, this. so in that way classes are known so such kind of actually uh, this machine learning techniques uh, where you know the classification uh, process you know what is the expected output and then actually this comes in supervised category and we don't know what is the output then it is unsupervised uh, learning and the reinforcement learning they give some experience that feedback so you don't know situation but after like you start learning and then then actually <coughs> automatically based on the feedback uh, this learn the this, this model learns itself and then uh, you perform the learning so there are various uh, types of classifiers Uh, based on these learnings and k nearest neighbor knn artificial neural network knn support vector machine sbm maze wise decision tree logistic regression and here you can see right hand side uh, this x this is actually feature and y is another feature so this is two dimensional feature set and uh, when you see for class a if you want to separate uh, then this uh, this y it should be uh, like uh, it should be this range and x should be in this range so that is actually uh, this two dimensional or sometimes a higher dimensional feature space uh, help us to uh, separate these two classes and uh, here you can see class b can be separated so sometimes uh, your signals your classes are not well separated in actual domain and uh, we project them we map them in a higher dimensional space uh, where nicely we can separate them. so this is actually uh, this motivation for the uh, like support vector machine based classifier high dimensional classifier and we are based on the kernel based the boundaries uh, we can separate out these classes so this this uh, now actually uh, there is a, a lot of motivation in the literature uh, that is uh, you will find lot of applications of machine learning in various domains but uh, actually uh, when you see the health point of view uh, this machine learning algorithms can play a very important role so these days uh, smart healthcare monitoring systems people are developing and you can see human body it is full with the signals like you can have electroencephalogram signal eeg blood pressure blood sugar oxygen saturation heart rate position activity electromyogram respiratory rate cholesterol level 
electrocardiogram so many signal these are the few few signals but uh, their body is rich with the signals and each signal has a lot of useful information and that signals actually can be uh, recorded and they can contain a lot of information that is uh, signals are recorded with the help of sensors and we have sensing data then we based on these signals we have features and then we have this uh, some electronic medical record previous histories of the person and then both we based on these uh, actually these informations uh, doctors can perform the diagnostic decision system in automated manner so that is actually uh, sometimes uh, you may have doctor like in these rural areas we have shortage of doctors and uh, sometimes we don't have doctors and such as intelligent systems expert systems uh, they <coughs> they are, they were based on the deep learning uh, machine learning techniques uh, they can be used uh, to have automated decision making systems and uh, suppose you are going to have heart attack and quickly it will be informed to you your family member and then quickly you can go to the hospital so this uh, heart disease absence heart disease presence recommended items or activities uh, automatically it can be done so such kind of actually systems are very useful and uh, these uh, systems uh, they can be installed in the smartphone and uh, in the form of software a smartphone will become very really smart so based on that actually uh, in hindi there is saying pehla sukh hai nirogi kaya dusra sukh hai hath mein maya so this means health is better than wealth so health is very important in life even if you are poor person doesn't matter but if you are healthy then you are the richest person in the world and according to english saying health is wealth so according to english health is like a wealth but according to hindi saying health is better than wealth so that is actually health is more important and uh, if you somehow we can connect this machine learning techniques with the health or assessment of the health that it is actually very good uh, very good contribution uh, to the literature and also for the uh, humanity and for the society uh, we are nicely uh, like we can detect uh, diseases in advance and uh, proper treatment can be done timely so first actually uh, this applications of machine learning for eeg signal analysis so uh, there are actually three applications in this talk uh, we have considered first epileptic seizure second one is stress classification and third one is uh, uh, emotion detection and even seizure also we have considered three problems on the analysis part second one is classification third one is detection so human brain uh, is actually is a highly complicated and nonlinear system and uh, even like if you record eeg signals uh, in the morning time when you are ha having happy emotion and again you are happy after 5 minutes then signals may not be same the signals are high, having highly high variability and uh, due to that actually these six signals are systems are high nonlinear brain system uh, by which these eeg signals are generated that actually has high uh, high nonlinear system and this electroencephalogram eeg signals they measure the electrical activity of the brain which is generated by the neurons so if you have any problem brain related problem and if you go to hospital uh, doctors they will take your eeg signal and based on the that they perform the diagnosis so eeg signal is a very useful uh, tool uh, for investigating different physiological and pathological states of the human brain and uh, quantitative analysis of eeg signal is a challenging task because uh, due to uh, this eeg signal when you see it is highly complicated and it is irregular in nature so like uh, uh, sometimes it looks like chaotic signal and uh, is also another reason that signal is a non stacy signal so like in signal processing uh, we use mathematical models to represent the signal and if any of the parameter of these models are changing with time then we call them non stacy signal and this eeg signal uh, falls in such actually classes uh, where the signals are the non stacy signal because uh, it has been shown in the literature even you limit the signal uh, for very small interval of time then also uh, the parameters of the models which we use to represent the eeg signal they are time varying so generally when you go to hospital uh, doctors they uh, they take your eeg signal and they perform visual scanning of eeg signal 
and that kind of method is actually very time consuming because sometimes you have to uh, perform visual scanning of EEG signal of two hours and uh, doctors are actually very less and the patients are many so uh, some it may be difficult also sometimes and it may be inaccurate also suppose you are taking uh, half an hour EEG signal and you are printing it on the paper then actually entire variations will be uh, not visible and it is very complicated and it is subject to judgment and suffers from human error and if you must have seen in our hospitals uh, sometimes doctor says uh, you have this migraine or you have depression then uh, patients actually or relatives or family members of the patient uh, they say let us have opinion of the second urologist so this uh, the, that uh, whatever decision in making system based to the human uh, that is not unique in nature so different different urologists can have, can have different kind of opinion and uh, this kind of scanning is performed by or by the trained professionals so that is actually uh, they need a particular uh, expertise and they need proper training then only they can perform uh, the signal recording so due to these reasons uh, the features which, which we obtain from the eg signals are very, very useful uh, for analysis and classification of eg signals and these features uh, can be used for the interpretation of the disease and they also can be used together with the machine learning based classifier in order to develop automated systems, intelligent systems, expert systems, where the signals of different field classes can be classified or can be identified in automated manner. So the first actually, uh, let us focus on this epileptic seizure. And uh, here, so this is, and it will, it will cover three parts, analysis, classification, detection of epileptic seizure. So epileptic seizures, uh, they are actually, they are the outcome of the transient and unexpected electrical disturbance of the brain. So in the brain, all neurons, they synchronize together and they generate very high electrical activity. And uh, due to that, actually this brain, uh, due to very high electrical activity, uh, brain actually disturbs and the brain is the master of the body. Once the brain is disturbed, then our entire activity of the body is disturbed. So this actually, uh, the seizure, it affects around 2% population of the world. And uh, we have proposed area parameter for analysis of normal and epileptic seizure EG signals and bandwidth parameters for classification of seizure and non-seizure EG signals and instantaneous area for the automated detection of epileptic seizures. And you will see these parameters, features, whatever we have proposed, they are very easy. They are very simple and they're like uh, disease doesn't see uh, whether you are illiterate or literate or you are a doctor, professor, you are IS officer. Uh, for disease, uh, everyone is same. It can go to anyone. So the parameter uh, actually uh, should be like that, that anybody can understand. So in other words, the whatever with in the disease diagnosis, we want to have uh, very simple parameters so that everybody can understand everybody can use these methods uh, for the diagnosis purpose. So this is actually three methods uh, that we have proposed and this is the overview of these three methods. So in this method, this empirical mode decomposition that is actually one of the signal processing technique uh, that has been used uh, for, uh, for analysis purpose and uh, before uh, going ahead with this empirical mode decomposition based method. So let us have some brief uh, overview of the signal analysis technique and what is the motivation for EMT method uh, in studying this work. So the first actually uh, the simple uh, or traditional method in signal processing when you go for signal analysis that is Fourier transform. So in Fourier transform, what we do, we represent signal in terms of sinusoidal functions. And these sinusoidal functions, uh, they are actually, you know, they are periodic functions and their duration is infinite. They extend from minus infinite to plus infinite. So due to that, actually, uh, spread of these signals, basis functions in Fourier transform, the sinusoidal functions, the spread is infinite. So due to that infinite spread, resolution in time domain is zero. So the, due to that, this, uh, uh, the signals like uh, uh, sinusoidal functions, which we use in uh, Fourier representation, they are suitable uh, for representing stasis signals, means whose properties are not changing with time. But in real life signals are non-stationary, for example, electron spallogram signal. And where this uh, the sinusoidal basis functions, 
and uh, they are not suitable uh, for representation purpose or for representing this non stationary nature of the EEG signals. So due to that, uh, this non stationary basis functions or the bindol basis functions were proposed. Uh, that was a part of uh, short time Fourier transform STFT. So what short time Fourier transform actually STFT, what we do, we divide the signal to different bit segments and each segment we assume that signal is stationary and then we apply Fourier transform and arrangement of these Fourier transform gives up short time Fourier transform STFT. So here STFT also uh, the window actually uh, size of the window is fixed, type of the window is fixed and uh, if you have low frequency component or high frequency component, both cases your window size is fixed but uh, uh, low frequency component requires wide analysis window and uh, high frequency component analysis require low, narrow analysis window. So different different kind of actually sizes are required uh, for different different kind of frequency component present in the signal. That was actually uh, that was the limitation of the STFT method because the once window is fixed, then it is suitable. For, it is used for entire analysis in terms of all different different kind of frequency component present in the signal. So due to that, uh, in order to have different different sizes or in order to have different different resolutions, multi resolution analysis. Uh, this wavelet was invented. In wavelet, actually, we use a scale concept, and based on the scale, uh, suppose you have a high frequency component present in the signal, then we use low scale, and if you have low frequency component present in the signal, then we use large scale. And uh, different different scale gives you the different different kind of resolution. So low scale gives you good time resolution, large scale gives you poor time resolution, and that way uh, you can actually. Uh, analyze different different kind of frequency component present the signal uh, with multi resolution and property and then this wavelet actually is also one of the important part this can be implemented with the help of filter bank you must have seen in the papers uh, you have low pass filter high pass filter down sample by two and it gives you approximation detail again approximation we can break into uh, two parts approximate detail like that so in that way we have this wavelet kind of filter bank and in that, uh, uh, there is no thumb rule which will suggest us what should be the number of levels and what should be the uh, mother wavelet uh, for analysis purpose. So, uh, due to that, actually, uh, this is 1998, this empirical mode decomposition uh, method has been proposed. And if, this actually it has come from computer science. Right? So, it is uh, instead of using mathematical formula like uh, Fourier transform, short time Fourier transform, wavelet transform. Here we use algorithm. So just algorithm, you whatever data you give, it will decompose and it will give you the components. So it, it is just like a data processing kind of method. Uh, you don't need to design basis functions from your side and you don't need to have any mathematical requirement, any conditions should be satisfied by the data. Just you give any data and this method will decompose this complicated data into simple data. So this uh, you have EG signals, uh, then we obtain intrinsic mode functions uh, using this EMD method, and which will give you IMFs, intrinsic mode functions, IMF, then we apply analytic signal representation of IMFs using the silver transform. And then we obtain area feature, which is based on the modified center tendency measure. And once you have this area feature, then we apply Kruskal-Weiss statistical test uh, in order to find out the statistically significant discrimination between normal and seizure EG signals. In another methodology, uh, we have analytic IMF, then we determine amplitude modulation and frequency modulation bandwidth features. And then these bandwidth features are given as an input to least square support vector machine classifier, uh, which automatically classifies the seizure and non seizure EG signals. And non seizure means it includes. Uh, uh, nor, nor seizure free and normal class of signals. Seizure free means earlier they were the epileptic epileptic seizures, but now treatment has been done and now they are seizure free. And normal means they never had epilepsy disease. And third methodology, we determine the standard area feature from the analytic IMFs. Then together with the seizure rules, uh, we detect the epileptic seizure. So for this study purpose, uh, we have actually uh, use this uh, uh, publicly available database uh, that is uh, by the University of Bonn 
And uh, this is actually, this is very simple database and this is, uh, uh, this university has made this database publicly available so that whatever methods uh, you develop, uh, you can compare with the methods already the, those have studied on this database and uh, you can find out what is the effectiveness of your proposed approach. So this data set includes five subsets, Z, O, N, F, and S. And uh, this Z subset includes eyes open EG signals uh, recorded from the healthy subjects. And subset O includes eyes closed EG signal recorded from the healthy subjects. And subsets N and F uh, include EG signal recorded from the seizure free subjects. And subset S includes EG signal from the seizure subjects. So in that way, this database actually has uh, EG signals uh, recorded uh, from healthy subjects, uh, from epileptic subjects, and also from the seizure-free subjects. So it gives you uh, a nice, very wide uh, analysis perspective, uh, so that like you can develop method for your variety of situations. And uh, each subset includes 100 single-channel EG signals, and with a duration of 23.6 seconds. And the sampling rate of the EEG signals in the data set is 173.61 hertz. And these EEG signals have been recorded uh, with the 128 channel amplifier system using common reference. So this neurologist actually has recorded the signals and based on the uh, manual identification, and he has uh, categorized them, he segregated these signals into uh, these three classes, uh, one normal and seizure and seizure free classes. So empirical mode decomposition a method is actually uh, suitable for non-linear non stage signal analysis. And uh, this is an adaptive method that we already we have seen doesn't require this is a condition of stationarity of the data. And uh, the data dependent method does not require design of basis functions like uh, like uh, is of Fourier transform, use sinusoidal functions in wavelet transform, use wavelets. You don't need to design basis functions. And uh, since the method is algorithms, so automatically these basis functions will be obtained from the signal itself. So that we call intrinsic mode function IMF. So this EMD method uh, decomposes a signal into set of narrow band intrinsic mode functions IMFs. And these IMFs can be modeled using amplitude and frequency modulated signal model, AMFM signal model. And that is actually uh, one of the uh, beauty of this analysis. So. In real life, it is very tough to get monocomponent AMFM signal, but this EMD method uh, gives you a platform where you you can decompose any signal in, in terms of AMFM signals. So this each IMF which we obtain using EMD method uh, satisfy two basic conditions: the number of extrema and the number of zero crossings must be the same or differ at most by one. So this actually first condition ensures that whatever IMF we have obtained. Uh, it is like sine cosine function and second condition is this the mean value of the envelopes defined by the local maximum and local minima is zero so this ensures that uh, whatever imf we obtain they are symmetric in nature this imf actually whenever we obtain this is default it satisfies these two conditions then only that function becomes candidate of imf so the whatever imf you obtain they are like sine cosine function and they are symmetric in nature and uh, once you have these uh, IMFs actually they are based on the residuals so there is maximum minima is what picking so you have a signal then we determine the maximums minimas and determine the envelopes then perform the averaging of both envelopes and then we subtract from the signal that we call residual and residuals should satisfy these two conditions so in that way, once IMF is derived, when we, we subtract from the signal that particular IMF, then we determine another residual. So different different residuals actually gives you different different uh, number of IMFs, and uh, or part that different different IMFs uh, from the different residuals. And uh, in the end, uh, when you are not able to derive any IMF from the residual, so that is actually last residual, and uh, from which further IMFs cannot be derived. So after that, well, we can represent the signal decomposition with the help of equation one. So this is actually the uh, sum of capital M IMFs and uh, this RMT is the last residual. So this is a residual. So in that way, the signal can be represented as a sum of IMFs plus residual. Uh, this is one of the example. Uh, here you can see the epileptic seizure EG signal. And uh, when you apply this EMD method, 
empirical mode decomposition method and then uh, it has uh, epileptic seizures uh, seizures so the spikes are there in the in the signal and uh, these spikes uh, that is actually is uh, due to synchronization of the neurons in the brain and uh, this signal has got two interesting features one is its uh, large amplitude and second one is its spiky nature so that actually uh, doctors uh, use for the diagnosis purpose and same these features uh, we want to extract uh, using this signal analysis technique. So uh, we have actually applied this empirical mode decomposition method. So you can see the first IMF, second IMF, third IMF, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth IMFs and thus residual. So this first IMF is corresponding to a high frequency component and that is actually a low, low scale. And uh, second, last IMF is corresponding to uh, the lowest frequency component present the scale, uh, present the signal that is the highest scale. So this low IMF one is the highest frequency component, and it's the lowest scale present the data, which gives you the detail. And similarly, IMF eight uh, that is corresponding to the lowest fre frequency and largest scale present the data. So it gives you the approximation part. So in that way, uh, these components whatever we obtain uh, from the EG signal, they are arranged from high frequency to a low frequency uh, in, in like in from uh, according to high frequency to low frequency and uh, they are symmetric in nature they are well behaved and that property actually we have used uh, uh, for this processing so uh, these signals are actually symmetric and they are narrow band signals imfs are narrow band signals so we have op applied Hilbert transform so the ct the signal imf plus J times uh, its uh, Hilbert transform gives you the analytic uh, signal, analytic signal, and that is actually uh, AT towards uh, phi T, and AT the time varying amplitude and phi T the time varying phase. And then uh, for the mth IMF, uh, this analytic signal representation, and you have the equation two. So this is like uh, this complex uh, uh, AMFM signal. So AMT the uh, time varying amplitude or mth IMF, Phi mt is the time varying phase of the mth IMF. And uh, this analytic signal representation of mth IMF uh, actually has two very interesting properties. Uh, the plot has direction of rotation and the rotation in the plot has unique center. So that is actually, uh, these two properties are very useful uh, to design the uh, interesting actually feature that we will see. So when you see the analytic signal representation of the EG signal, and analytic signal representation of the IMFs. Uh, then you see, when you see the analytic signal representation of the signal, there is no absence of the geometry and there is no specific geometry available present in the data. It has multiple centers. On the other hand, if you see analytic signal representation of IMFs, then you will see uh, there is a nice circular structure is available and it has unique center. So it helps us to define area parameter uh, for these IMFs in the complex plane that is not possible without decomposition. So this shows the actually the beauty of the EMD method, which decomposes this complicated signal in terms of such IMFs whose, uh, whose analytic signal representation uh, shows actually circular pattern in the complex plane. So that, that help us to or motivates us to define area parameter, uh, which is actually linked with the epilepsy activity. And whenever this parameter is higher, it shows the presence of epilepsy. And whenever this parameter is lower, then it shows the absence of epilepsy. And uh, now how to compute area in automated manner. So that actually we have proposed uh, modify center tendency measure. So if you have n total number of points and are the radius of the central area, then modified CTM is given by the equation three. So here you can see uh, this, uh, we. We decide we put a specific radius, and uh, if we, uh, any point, uh, if it's uh, uh, the if its magnitude is less than this radius, uh, then we assign this weight to one, otherwise, it is zero. So, in that way, it counts the total number of points uh, which, which are falling inside this radius out of the total number of points. So, that gives you so 95 percent uh, CTM has been used uh, to compute the radius. And based on the radius, we compute the area parameters, A equal to pi r square. And after that, uh, we have also actually used this detection of epileptic seizures. 
So that is in similar way like the sort line Fourier transform, uh, we uh, divide segment this IMF which is to different parts and each part uh, we actually determine the area parameter and then you interpolate them so it gives you strength in this area. At any point of time you can now determine the strength of the epilepsy. So this sentence area at any point of time is computed by using a moving window method and the selected size of each moving window is uh, 3840 samples and this window size is considered uniform for all EG signals and the sentence area of mth IMF uh, is defined mathematically uh, by equation 4. And after that, this uh, another very interesting actually these features uh, that are amplitude modulation and frequency modulation bandwidth of these genetic IMFs. So whenever we talk about the bandwidth of the signal, uh, then actually uh, there is this is the spread of the signal in the frequency domain. This is the actually uh, this common uh, way of looking the uh, bandwidth. Uh, and uh, coherently they come up with a new definition of the bandwidth. And according to them, this bandwidth can be represented in terms of amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. So they, they define bandwidth for amplitude and frequency modulated components. But uh, for real life signals, how to determine AMFM components? How to get the AMFM components? So this EMD method uh, help us to decompose real life signals, which are multi-component AMFM signal nature into set of monocomponent AMFM signals. And then we can nicely determine when we do to AM and when we do to FM. That is equation five. So first part is gives you the bandwidth due to amplitude modulation. This is bandwidth due to AM. And second part gives you the bandwidth due to frequency modulation. That is the bandwidth due to FM. So these actually, uh, these bandwidth features can be used uh, as a feature set in order to uh, automatically classify seizure and non-seizure classes of EG signal. That we will see how they are useful. And now let us see some results. So uh, first for analysis of normal and uh, seizure EG signals, the subset actually uh, Z from the normal class and subset S from the seizure class. So this method can detect patients with epilepsy uh, using EG signals from the normal people. And uh, EMD method help us to cover more than 95% of the data points which lie within the circuit due to having circular form of analytic IMFs. And uh, we have estimated area parameters uh, for the, both the classes normal and seizure uh, based on the analytic signal representation of IMFs or various window the sizes, uh, which are 500 samples, 1000 samples, 2000. And, and this figure actually is very interesting figure, uh, which shows the uh, CTM in terms of percentage versus radius. And uh, one can see from this figure, like uh, in case of normal case, uh, the requirement of uh, radius is less uh, or around 300 in order to have 100% CTM. On the other hand, if you see the seizure case, uh, the requirement of radius is around 1200 in order to reach CTM 200%. One can see uh, this actually the requirement of radius is large. Uh, for seizure case as compared to the normal case. So this motivated us to use this radius as a like a feature uh, or since the radius is increasing, then area will also increase. So that is, and it, it, it needs to visualize the area. And so that based on that, uh, we got motivation uh, for defining area parameter and which nicely can separate these normal and seizure classes of easy signal. So this actually figure uh, is so the Kruskova statistical uh, results and uh, a Kruskova statistical test, the probability value, if it is, uh, if it is less than 0 0.05 or 5%, then, then we call that these two classes are statistically significant. And here you can see the first four IMFs, IMF1, IMF2, IMF3, IMF4, and seizure and normal classes, they are nicely uh, separated. And that's for window length of 4,000 samples. Same thing for window length of 2,048 samples. Uh, this area parameter is able to separate the normal and seizure free classes, so seizure classes, and uh, uh, with the probability value that is also coming out to be zero. So this, in this case, also this analysis, whatever we obtain, that is statistically significant analysis. And then we have studied same thing for 2,000 samples. 
uh, or window length and the here in this case this probability value is also coming out to be zero for the all first for the for imfs so here also this studied method is uh, statistically significant and uh, for 1000 samples also uh, this cruskevice statistical test is able to uh, separate these two classes normal and CZ, with the probability value equals to zero and that is also true for 500 samples and uh, this actually whatever we have seen previously uh, with the help of the graph plots now we can see uh, these uh, results in terms of quantitative parameters so in this table uh, for the normal and seizure subjects uh, for different window sizes 500 1000 2000 4000 samples and imf1 imf2 imf3 imf4 this is the minimum maximum medium value of this area parameters and here you can see uh, for seizure case uh, this area parameter is actually uh, larger as compared to the normal case and then in the literature there are various actually studies have been done and people have used various uh, signal processing methods machine learning techniques uh, for the classification of the seizure and normal EG signals and uh, you can see in the table they got accuracy like 97.2 percent 99.6 percent 92.22 percent 98.22 percent 95 percent and our method actually uh, doesn't use machine learning because the feature set itself is strong analysis part itself is strong so you don't need the classification so that actually this uh, part shows the importance of the analysis part so sometimes machine learning techniques people are just uh, not doing analysis part they are just doing classification and uh, by doing analysis even you can come up with the such set of features which can be uh, more relevant which can be more uh, interpretative interpretive in nature so the selection of the spoon depends on the type of food and if you want to have noodles then we use fork because your food is discontinuous your spoon is discontinuous and similarly here luckily we got such a, uh, such a signal analysis technique which is requirement of the uh, studied problem and uh, that so that is why we don't need classification but in other parts of this work you will see importance of the classification part also and uh, after that uh, we have studied the classification of seizure and non-seizure EG signals and in this part the subset Z, O, N and F uh, they are combined to form the non-seizure class and subset S from the seizure class. So this methodology uh, can detect patients uh, who are having epilepsy uh, from the normal and seizure free people and this EMD method decomposes the non-linear non-stacy signals into set of narrowband AMFM components or IMFs and then this uh, uh, earlier formula that help us to compute the bandwidth due to AM and bandwidth due to FM for these AMFM components and then these bandwidth features uh, actually find out the contribution uh, of the bandwidth due to AM and FM parts and then we, we have developed feature space and then use the machine learning based classifier support vector machine classifier least by support vector machine classifier in order to automatically identify uh, this uh, seizures and no seizure EG signals so this actually uh, here uh, this figure shows the results uh, in for bandwidth due to am uh, with the for the first four imfs and seizure and no seizure EG signals and uh, this bandwidth due to am uh, for the remaining imf 5 to 8 they are not able to show the difference so the first four IMFs are able to show the difference between a seizure and non-seizure signal, but they are not showing good difference uh, like earlier. <coughs> Similarly, bandwidth due to frequency modulation uh, for the first four IMFs, they are able to show the difference, and uh, the remaining IMFs five to eight, they are not able to show the difference between seizure and non-seizure signals. So this motivates us to actually uh, map these features or project these features into high-dimensional space. Uh, where uh, we can separate out them in order to uh, identify these two classes. So this also we can see uh, in terms of probability uh, using this Koskova statistical test. So this table shows the probability values of the bandwidth features of the IMFs used in this test. Uh, for the first four IMFs, you can see these both features, uh, they are showing the probability values coming out less than 0.05. And for the remaining IMF 5 to 8, this bandwidth features are not statistically significant because their probability values are greater than 0.05. So due to these reasons, 
uh, we have selected first four IMFs, uh, bandwidth features, and because they are statistically significant analysis, they have, they have small probability values. And uh, then in order to have better classification, improved classification, uh, we have provided them as an input set uh, for the features uh, for the machine learning based least risk squares support vector machine classifier in order to have obtain more accurate classification. So least risk squares support vector machine classifier that is actually improved version of the support vector machine classifier and two class support vector machine uh, we consider following decision function fx equal to sin wtgx plus v and here w is the l dimension weight vector gx is the mapping function and v is the bias. So based on this sign function, uh, we can take a decision whether it is a, a it is seizure or non seizure. So it is like binary classification can be done. If plus sign means it is first one class and minus sign means it is another class. So this is a brief overview of this list class about vector machine classifier. So we have select features and uh, we select some features for tending set. And uh, then uh, together with this kernel function and its parameters, uh, we actually train the classifier, least risk squares support vector machine classifier. Once it is trained, then we have nice actually trained system and this testing features. So some remaining features uh, we use for the testing purpose. And uh, then we evaluate the performance of the classifier during this testing phase. So based on the sign, uh, we, if it is plus, then we say this is one class. If sign is minus, then this is another class. So in that way, this binary classification uh, can be done uh, with the help of uh, these uh, features and uh, using this issue square support vector machine classifier. So for uh, uh, actually this uh, kernel functions that is also one of the important part for this support vector machine classifier and in order to have boundaries. And so this uh, we have studied following kernel functions in this work, uh, polynomial kernel, mathematically it is defined by the equation 7 and where L is the degree of polynomial and the radial basis function and this mathematically expressed by the equation 8 and here sigma controls the width of the radial basis function and the Mexican head wavelet kernel function is defined by the equation 9 and modulate wavelet kernel function is also defined by the equation 10. So these actually uh, functions, kernel functions we have used in this work and uh, then in order to measure the classification performance, uh, we have used the following measures and that sensitivity, specificity and accuracy. So sensitivity is the proportion of the epileptic seizures which are correctly identified by the algorithm. Uh, since uh, TP upon TP plus FN and TP is the true positive, FN is false negative. Specificity is the proportion of the segments uh, without seizures. Uh, correctly identified by algorithm. So mathematically it is represented by a specific part percent of Tn upon Tn plus Fp. So Tn is true negative and Fp is false positive. And accuracy is the proportion of correctly detected seizures and non-seizures by the algorithm. And this is a mathematical representation of the accuracy uh, true positive Tp plus Tn upon Tp plus Tn plus Fp plus Fn. So these three classification measures actually perform measures we have used. And uh, this table shows the sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy, these three performance measures of the uh, first four IMFs, uh, because they are only these first four IMFs are especially significant uh, for addition classifier for classification between non seizure and seizure signals. So, this kernel function polynomial RBF, Mexican head, and monolith, and these kernel parameters uh, that you see, uh, which are actually, uh, which are based on the tag and error method. So like uh, these parameters have provided better classification performance measures and then the statistical parameters or performance measures in terms of percentage for this first IMF, second, and third, fourth. And this is a minimum maximum value uh, for the 10 tiles, that is for 10 fold cost validation. And here you can see uh, for the mollet kernel function, uh, the second IMF uh, provides the better classification performance. So then also there is actually another classification performance measure that is uh, also commonly used in the literature that is receiver operating characteristics curve and its area. So we have also used this receiver operating uh, characteristic curve and computed area and uh, uh, this receiver operating characteristics actually is a plot between sensitivity versus permanent specificity. 
and when you see the area computed from this ROC curve, then polynomial uh, radial basis function Maxon hat and this mallet, uh, mallet has given better class, better area under curve. So if area under curve is coming out to be one, it shows the excellent performance. So mallet kernel function is giving better performance as compared to other studied kernels. So this also validates the uh, good performance of mallet uh, kernel function, which is evident uh, from the earlier three perform measures. So uh, this 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 actually this is a validation. So this means this mallet uh, kernel function for the second IMF uh, together second with together with second IMFs. Uh, in the least square support vector machine classifier can be used for the developing this automated identification system. Yeah, this is actually a very important result. Uh, the feature space obtained for testing set uh, for the least square support vector machine classifier uh, with mallet wavelet kernel for the second IM of a VG signal. And here bandwidth due to frequency modulation, bandwidth due to AM amplitude modulation. And here you can see the shaded region. Uh, this these features are coming when we, we take decision in favor of seizure, otherwise it is non-seizure. So in that way, seizure and non-seizure identification can be done. And such system actually can be installed in the smartphones, mobile, laptop, uh, computing devices, rural areas, uh, where uh, just you record the signal from the person and perform the EMD decomposition, obtain the second IMF, then determine the bandwidth features and map them in the feature space and it's coming in the shaded area then we call it a seizure otherwise it is non-seizure. So in that way automatically one can understand and uh, uh, with the, without presence of doctor uh, one can take decision like a doctor and then for the further treatment uh, the person can approach the urban areas where uh, doctors are available for the further treatment. So there are various methods in the literature uh, for the classification of seizure and non-seizure is signals. Uh, which we are based on the uh, signal processing and machine learning techniques and uh, this uh, our proposed method which is based on the empirical mode decomposition bandwidth features and these two support vector machine classifier it gives you a better classification performance as uh, as compared to the other existing methods in the literature so that is actually uh, this method uh, uh, can be considered as a uh, like a uh, improved method or can be better than the other existing methods in the literature because uh, most of the methods they are based on the wavelet and sometimes they are based on the uh, simple time frequency technique and this is the uh, this is the advanced version of the signal processing and also this uh, uh, machine learning techniques so it, it can it has improved the uh, the framework uh, where nicely the seizure and non-seizure e signals can be classified after that epileptic seizure detection that is actually one of the important part for the diagnosis of epilepsy so detection of epileptic seizure based on the visual inspection of each signal is very time consuming and it may be inaccurate particularly for long data recordings so uh, when someone is driving for example uh, this uh, somebody is driving a car and uh, that person also can have epileptic seizures so this automatic seizure detection methods are very useful and uh, there is a lot of interest in the literature uh, to implement them in real time manner and for specifically for the epileptic patients. So uh, this instantaneous area parameter based method is actually highly suitable and this parameter becomes higher that shows the indication of the epileptic seizure. And then this, this such kind of systems can give you a warning, give a warning to the person who is driving car and the person can stop the car and you can take the epilepsy drugs and then again uh, again you can start the car and you can drive the car so in that way uh, this attack can be bypassed so if you can detect it in advance then you can take uh, uh, required medicines or epilepsy drugs and once it is uh, bypassed now you are, you are settled down to your stable mode then you can again you can do the activity so these actually, these uh, epileptic seizure detection algorithms are very useful. And uh, uh, in this study, uh, we have taken easy data set, which is publicly available to the University of Free World, Germany. And uh, this also actually, there are two types of EEG recordings. Uh, one is recorded uh, with the help of this uh, uh, electrode cap and that surface EEG recording. And other one is recorded from the inside of the brain, that is invoice, uh, sorry, 
in invasive EEG recording. That is first one is non-invasive EEG recording. So invasive uh, sometimes uh, this focal epilepsy. Uh, so this uh, focal epilepsy it makes a actually area that is uh, now a specific area and always epilepsy will be originated from that region only. So in order to have diagnosis or in order to have actually uh, uh, that identification of the, this that area we need to have signals from good signal to noise so SNR. So they are recorded from the inside. And for focal epilepsy, uh, in 80% cases, it has been shown that they are drug resistant epilepsy, so like medicines doesn't show effect, and you have to go for surgery only. And then signal processing and machine learning techniques play important role uh, to identify that reason from which this focal epilepsy originated. So in this work, uh, we have considered this uh, medical key Tractable, intractable focal epilepsy EEG signals and uh, this a database EEG data required using digital video EEG system with 128 channels and 256 hertz sampling rate and 16 bits analog digital converter. So in this study three intra source records of nine patients with focal epilepsy originated in the temporal low region has been selected. So total we have 90 segments uh, per each channel. And 51 of them without epileptic seizures and 39 segments noted as having only one epileptic seizure. So this is very interesting example. Uh, you can see the easy signal. And in the middle, it has got epileptic episode. So it is not clear. But when you decompose this easy signal using this EMD method, there is a first IMF, second IMF, third IMF, and second and third IMF <coughs> shows the booster uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, IMFs, uh, boost up of this epileptic seizure. Uh, it shows the clear presence of uh, epileptic seizures. And it will be more clear when you go for the instantaneous area parameter. So this is the signal, and this is the instantaneous area parameter of IMF1, IMF2, IMF3. And uh, this these actually boundaries, you can see this uh, dashed lines beginning and ending of this episode that is obtained from the neurologist references. And our proposed method, whatever we have detected beginning and ending of this episode, that is shown by the circles. So that is from the our method. So our proposed method is providing detection and actually of this beginning and ending point of the seizure uh, in the range which is uh, which is obtained from the neurologist. So this this method can be used as an alternate of the neurologist uh, for the diagnosis of epilepsy. So then we have actually performed some decision rules uh, for epileptic seizure detection uh, based on the instantaneous area of IMFs. So the first decision rule requires the computation of the threshold of instantaneous area of IMFs of EEG signals for all channels. And the threshold of the mth IMF is computed by equation 11. So this is empirically it is derived, this formula. And the second decision rule requires the identification of those seizure activities which are available in at least two of the three instantaneous areas of IMFs of each channel. <coughs> and third rule requires the making an inter-channel decision uh, based on the identification of those seizure activities which are available in at least two of the three channels. So where presence of seizure activity in each channel is decided by the rule two. So in that way, out of these three channels, if two channels are in the favor of epilepsy, then we take decision in favor of epilepsy. Otherwise, it is uh, a seizure free. So uh, the out of three, uh, we go for majority. That is so, so more reliable actually results, more reliable detection will be considered. So now we'll see some results, the performance evaluation parameters. So the patient segments, this two positive, two negative, false positive, false negative. And uh, here is sensitivity specificity. Uh, this already uh, we have seen these parameters. And this positive predictive value, negative predictive value, error rate detection. Mathematically, they are defined by these for expressions bottom of the slide. And uh, this sensory specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, these parameters, they are expecting to be very high. So they are coming to be high also. And ERD is expected to be less and it is coming out to be less also. So our proposed method actually is providing the desired results. And then we have compared our method with other existing methods in the literature. Uh, like Orosco others and Korai others, they use energy of IMFs of EEG signals, energy of EEG signals, 
and they got various sensitivity specificity, positive predictor value, negative predictor value, error rate detection, etc. And the proposed method that is based on the steadiness area measure of analytic IMFs of EEG signal. And uh, they they gives you better uh, sensitivity, better specificity, better positive predictor value, better negative predictor value, and less EID as compared to other acquisition methods. So our proposed method uh, provides better classification performance than the other existing methods in the literature. After that, uh, this actually this time frequency image based features uh, for classification of sleep stages have been suggested. And that is actually very important part. This uh, sleep stages uh, that is actually uh, it is in India, uh, you will find the people are very robust to sleep, even like uh, uh, to like poor, uh, poor people, poor people uh, in terms of money, they are poor, but in terms of health, you will find they are very rich. Even like uh, railway stations, uh, public platforms, even villages, even farmers, they, in the farm, they can sleep. So that actually, they are very robust to, to sleep stages. They can like, uh, a person is able to sleep anywhere, this means they have very good health. And uh, uh, they even without bed, people can sleep. So in India, we have actually very uh, uh, lax people from the sleep, stage, but uh, when people become rich, uh, they develop sleep disorders. So actually that is, uh, uh, that's like saying this uh, people like in literature, Sasha, they say, give the example. Uh, then uh, this, uh, they are always when you are thinking about money, 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 and then actually this thinking process, then you are the carrier of the Lakshmi. And Lakshmi ji is uh, like, uh, uh, you are always uh, carrying Lakshmi ji. And who is the carrier of Lakshmi ji? Can anyone answer? Can anyone answer who is the carrier of Lakshmi ji? Aul. Am I able? Aul. Aul, yeah. So this person actually becomes Aul. And Aul is active in night. So these persons, they are always thinking about money, money, money. They don't sleep at night. And they develop these sleep disorders. So for such people, actually, uh, even I uh, find many people, uh, they take medicines to sleep. Uh, but on the other hand, if you find uh, like uh, uh, the people, they are not sensitive to our money, uh, even they're poor, but they are very rich people and uh, they can sleep there. So these easy signals are commonly used signals for classification of a problem and very useful for the diagnosis of sleep disorders. So according to this, uh, actually there is a, a very old standard that uh, uh, RNK standard and that was proposed in 1965, around 1965. And according to RNK standard, there are six sleep stages. So like uh, awake, non-rapid eye movement, S1, S2, S3, S4 and rapid eye movement. So six sleep stages, this rapid eye movement that is actually uh, is responsible for the dreams and uh, there is a lot of actually in villages uh, if you see some dream uh, and you mention that to your uh, village people then they will ask you what time you have seen that dream if you have seen in the night around 12 o'clock then nobody will take your dream seriously but if you have seen a dream uh, around uh, like uh, morning time this rapid eye movement that is called Brahma Murta in India and it is between 3 to 5 o'clock that time. So if you have seen dream in the morning time, then people take it seriously and then they interpret it different, different ways. Even Ramayana time, Cheta uh, Yuga, this Ropadi, sorry, this uh, uh, Mandudari, uh, this predicted in the dream itself that uh, Ravad is going to die. And she actually informed to uh, husband Ravad that you are going to die as you are seeing in the dream. So, uh, there is a lot of interpretation of the dreams and uh, dreams, uh, people are actually connecting uh, dreams with the object that you see. So like uh, whatever object you see 
and what is associated EEG signal. So in that way, people are coming with coming up with the dictionary and where like uh, you can have mapping of EEG signal with the object. And based on that, so that uh, if you have seen some dream that can be detected, that can be understood, that can be interpreted. And uh, uh, even India, like uh, old time in villages, uh, if some girl has seen the uh, uh, these Bengals, then actually people interpret that now she is going to get married this year and there will be nice celebrations. So we will start preparing for that function. So uh, there were a lot of actually uh, interpretations. Life uh, was very uh, like uh, uh, rural areas. Uh, people take dreams very seriously. This is also one kind of actually information for them. Recently, this uh, uh, the one of the important part actually for this uh, deep sleeping rapid eye movement that alcoholic people <coughs> they cannot cover actually rapid eye movement cycle. So that rapid eye movement cycle is actually is a, a rapid eye movement step of the sleeping is responsible for the dreams. And uh, this alcoholic people, uh, they cannot receive dreams because this, they don't cover rapid eye movement cycle. So that is responsible for the dreams or responsible for the deep sleeping. So this uh, alcoholic people, they don't sleep in deep. That is so they uh, indirectly, they accumulate sleep disorders. And recently another sleep um, uh, scoring method or sleep standard has come that is American Academy of Sleep Medicine uh, which combines sleep stairs S3 and S4 of RMT standard uh, into uh, a single stage which is known as slow wave sleep or deep sleep. So according to RMT standard there are six sleep stages and according to American Academy of Sleep Medicine there are five stages. Now we have to classify them. So manual method for classification of sleep stage is very time consuming and it is prone to inter and intra scholar variability and due to that reason there is a lot of interest in the literature uh, to classify uh, these uh, six sleep stages in our RMK standard, five sleep stages in American Academy of Sleep Medicine using EEG signals and develop automated classification system. So this is the proposed methodology. Uh, we have EEG signals of sleep stages, uh, for example, like six sleep stages, uh, RNK standard. Uh, then we obtain time frequency representation uh, based on the pseudo Vignavir distribution method. And then uh, we perform segmentation of time frequency image of EEG signals uh, based on the frequency bands of the thumbs. And then we obtain the features based on the histogram of sub images of the EEG signals. And then these features are given as an input to multi-class least square support vector machine classifier. And then you have awake S1, S2, S3, S4, S5 for this for the RMK standard. And uh, awake S1, S2, and these sleep stage and REM stage, rapid eye movement stage, that is for American Academy of Sleep Medicine. So in that way, uh, with this framework, where you can identify uh, these stages based on the American Academy of Sleep Medicine or based on the RNK standard. So for the study purpose, uh, we have taken this EEG data set, which is publicly available online at Figionet website. And these recordings have been obtained from the eight males and females whose age vary from 21 to 35 years old without any medication. And this uh, signals have been recorded from the horizontal FPZ, CZ, PZ, OZ, EEG signals. Uh, each sampled at 100 Hertz. And according to RNK standard, uh, this EEG data has been uh, recorded or divided and uh, into, uh, it is starts from 12 o'clock uh, in the night and ends at 5 o'clock in the morning. So this 5 hours time, we are able to uh, represent this all, all 6 sleep stages uh, in the data and that is actually recurrent. So 5 hours sleeping is sufficient uh, to cover these uh, 6 sleep stages. So then we have obtained time frequency representation uh, using a smooth pseudo Vignavir distribution method. So the mathematical formula uh, for computing the smooth pseudo Vignavir distribution of a signal uh, is on by the equation 11. And this is very interesting actually platform. Suppose if you want to use uh, deep learning methods, convolution neural network based approaches uh, for signal classification, then you can convert signal into two dimensional signal or images using such kind of time frequency technique. So this is the plot of versus uh, of magnitude as a function of time and frequency 
uh, this magnitude is a positive quantity, so we can convert this into intensity of image. So this time frequency distribution uh, can be <coughs> converted into image. And uh, this uh, figure shows the gray image representation of time frequency image using a smooth pseudo wagner distribution of rapid eye movement sleep stage of EEG signal. And then we have uh, used this uh, segmentation in terms of rhythms. So each rhythm has different frequency range in time frequency domain. This frequency axis is divided into different, different bands, segmented based on the rhythms, uh, frequency range. So the left hand side is gray and right hand side is binary subimages representation of time frequency image corresponding to frequency bands of delta rhythm, theta rhythm, alpha, beta and gamma rhythms. Then we have obtained histogram of gray and binary subimages of time frequency image corresponding to frequency bands of delta rhythm, theta rhythm, alpha, beta, and gamma rhythms. So left hand side, you can see this is for uh, gray images and right hand side is for binary images. And then we have defined features based on the histogram of subimages of the EG signals. So this maximum count of pixel intensity in the histogram of gray subimages is by equation 12 and is spread in the histogram of gray subimages defined by equation 13. And aspect ratio in the histogram of binary subimages is defined by the equation 14. And then actually uh, here, uh, this like earlier case, it was a binary class classification problem, but here it is multi-class classification problem. So we have used multi-class least square support vector machine uh, in order to identify the multi-classes of this, uh, in this uh, sleep stages. And uh, the season function of multi-class square support vector machine is defined by the equation 15. So here we have, uh, you can see uh, this uh, kernel is also defined by kth class. So the different different kernels are required for different different classes. So based on that, actually, you know, one can take the, uh, one can identify them based on the sign. So in this work, following kernel functions are used, uh, radial basis function, uh, we have this is defined by the equation 16 and uh, this is for kth class and uh, we have sigma k controls the width of rbf kernel and mexican head wavelet kernel function defined by the equation 17 and mollet wavelet kernel function defined by the equation 18 and here you can see uh, this uh, now question is what is the need of segmentation of time frequency image so we have studied this uh, this point also in this work so without segmented time frequency image, we perform the classification and without with segmented so time frequency image, we also perform the classification. So without segmented time frequency image, uh, you have kernel from the RBA, max and head model. And these are the parameters the, based on time and makers have been considered here. And awake S1, S2, S3, S4, RAM uh, in total accuracy also can be seen without segmentation and with segmentation of time frequency image. And uh, you can see, for example, mollet kernel function without segment of time frequency image, it gives you 79.99% classification accuracy and total. And uh, when you perform segment of time frequency image using mollet, then it gives you 92.93% classification accuracy. So here you can see it is a huge improvement in the classification performance. And that is actually uh, when you are performing segmentation. So these are results for the uh, actually based on window size of 64 samples uh, using multi-class C-square support vector machine classifier. And uh, this uh, table shows the confusion matrix for the classification accuracy for the sleep stages of EG signals for modulated wavelet kernel with window size of 64 samples. Uh, then actually this table shows the comparison uh, study over the classification of sleep stages based on the RNK standard. And Dorian Scott and other students say when they use FFT based features and inner Marco model, and they saw the various classification for different sleep stages. And total accuracy they got that is 61.08%. Gural and other student 10 use hybrid features and cluster based classifier using PCA. And these are the individual sleep stages classification accuracy, and this is a total classification accuracy 69.98%. And proposed method, which is use time frequency image based features and multi class e square support vector machine classifier, uh, gives you uh, this. Uh, uh, you can see uh, the uh, individual sleep stage classification and total accuracy uh, is coming out 88.47 percent. That is higher than the other existing methods in the literature. Our American Academy of Sleep Medicine, that is standard, is relatively new, and very less work has been done in the literature. 
and uh, Sue and other 2013, they use energy-based features in lemon we will classify, and they got uh, different different this class classifies like this for particular sleep stage, and total accuracy they got 87.20 percent, and our proposed method which is based on the time frequency based wave features and multi classes for support vector machine classified, and uh, you can see we get better individual stage accuracy also and total accuracy also which is 92.93 percent. So that is better than the other existing methods. That is. And here you can see there is a lot of scope uh, to explore machine learning methods, artificial intelligence techniques, signal processing, image processing, deep learning, or your uh, convolutional network kind of approaches so that it, 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 it will improve. The classification performance can be improved. After that, uh, in the last part of this uh, talk, we will see multi wavelet transform based features. Uh, for human emotion classification. So EEG signals are very useful actually signals and uh, uh, they are also uh, having information related to different emotional states and which help us to understand physiology and psychology of the human brain. And uh, human actually uh, is having very good connection with the emotions and you will see uh, many animals I mean, they, they don't they don't have so much significant emotions like we have. Uh, and based on that, it makes us different than the animals. So it is very good. And uh, uh, you can see due to this COVID-19 and due to a lot of stresses, anxiety, depression. And uh, if you go to doctor, they will see your EEG signal. And EEG signal is very useful uh, for assessing the uh, these negative and positive emotions. And the emotions which are measured by the EEG signals are very useful because difficult to influence electrical brain activity intentionally. Uh, generally, people use speech processing based methods for emotion detection, but speech also can be manipulated. Face recognition based method, face also can be modified, face can be changed. But brain signals, it is difficult to manipulate. Brain is the master of the body, it is difficult to change the brain. So, uh, what we believe, uh, whatever this emotion is detected based on the brain signals, that is more reliable as compared to the other model T4 emotion detection. So this emotion classification based on the EEG signals can also help us to develop an improved brain computer interface system. And that is actually, uh, sometimes people are not able to speak and based on the brain signals, we can understand what kind of emotions they have and treatment can be performed for such kind of persons. Uh, if uh, during treatment, the person is becoming happy and then this means treatment is showing respect. So we can actually, uh, connect if this uh, VCA system can be used for assisting the physically disabled people and impaired people to interact with the real world. So this is the proposed methodology uh, structure. Uh, we have experimental setup, then we have pre-processing. So signals have actually unwanted frequency component, undesired uh, frequency components, uh, they can be removed during this pre-processing part. Then we have multi wavelet transform. And then it gives you components, uh, sub band signals. Then we have uh, Euclidean distance based features we compute from the three dimensional phase space reconstruction. Uh, then multi class least square support vector machine classifier is used uh, to classify these uh, emotions uh, happy, neutral, sadness, and fear emotions using EG signals. So these EG signals have been collected from the eight healthy subjects, four males and four females, whose age vary from 20 to 35 years. <coughs> during audio video stimulus and the subjects were the undergraduate students or employees from IIT Indore and switching channel EG module biopack system in compliance to the international 10 to 20 system is used for recording of EG signals and sampling rate was 1000 hertz of the EG signals with bipolar montage for this study and this study has examined four emotional states which includes happy, neutral, sadness and fear and uh, in this experiment, three audio video stimulus with five trials of each emotion from eight subjects with F3, F4 channel of signals have been used. And uh, we have total 480 EG signals and uh, with two setting duration. And this is the electrode cap location of the electrodes which we have measured emotions. And this is the arousal and uh, valence diagram uh, where location of the each emotion is, is specified. This is the uh, block diagram of the complete methodology. So this uh, person is watching video so that the emotions will be introduced and then emotions, uh, the signals will be recorded from that particular emotion. 
and then we get used the data, then we perform pre-processing, then we apply non-state signal decomposition, then we have the subband signal, then we extract the features, uh, then we perform the classification uh, using this multi-class t square support vector machine classifier. So this multi-wavelet transform is an extension of the idea of a scalar wavelet where multiple scaling functions and associated multiple wavelets are used instead of single one. And the multi wavelet offers advantages like simultaneously exhibit orthogonality, sort support, symmetry, and second order approximation. So, three commonly used multi wavelets have been employed in this work uh, the GHM, CL, and SA4 multi wavelets. And the concept of phase space is very important tool in order to characterize the high dimension dynamic systems. So, in order to extract the nonlinear dynamics of the subband signals obtained by the multi wavelet decomposition, we have used the phase space reconstructions. So, the phase space reconstruction of subband signals as can be expressed mathematically by this formula. And uh, this and this is one example of the third level sub signals obtained by CL multi wavelet decomposition of EG signals on in three dimensional phase space representation. So, therefore, uh, like three level of decomposition, then there will be one approximate three days. So four subband signals are there, and you can see uh, three dimensional phase space representation. And now, how to summarize the information which is present in this three dimensional PSR plot? So that is uh, done by the proposed features, that is mean of Euclidean distance and a standard deviation of the Euclidean distance. So mathematically, they are computed by the equation 19 and 20. And this Euclidean distance actually is computed from this three dimensional phase space representation that itself is one dimensional. So this is a, uh, recently we have explored this concept for higher dimensional space also because the major advantage that even if you go to 20 dimensional phase space representation, but your, uh, this Euclid distance will be one dimensional signal. So that is important and you can simple feature can be extracted. <coughs> so now we will see some results uh, in the proposed method, GHM, CL, SA for multi have been used. And third level decomposition uh, is of the multi transform is used and uh, phase space representation of sub-signals uh, is actually very useful for high dimensional representation and uh, which computes the uh, Euclidean distance based features from the decomposed subband signal <coughs> and then mean standard deviation of Euclidean distance of three dimensional phase space representation is summarized. Uh, the complexity of the decomposed subsignals, which is linked with the different emotional states of the human brain. And these features have been used as an input to the multi class C square support vector machine classifier <coughs> with the RBF kernel, Mexican head, and moderate wavelet kernel functions. This table shows the this multi wavelet uh, GHM, SF4CL, and then uh, various kernel functions which have been studied and uh, together with uh, this trial and error based parameters. And then obtain classification accuracy for happy neutral sad and fear emotions <coughs> and also for total accuracy at 91.04 percent so here as you can see the cl multi wavelet kernel function a cl multi wavelet kernel multi wavelet together with this smallet wavelet kernel function provides you 91.04 percent classification accuracy which is higher than the other uh, multi wavelets and kernel functions and this uh, table shows the uh, confusion matrix of molded wavelet kernel function of the multi class e square support vector machine classifier uh, for classification of motion from easy signals with the CL multi wavelet. And uh, then we have compared our method with other existing methods in the literature. So, Lin and others to attend, they used music uh, from 24 channels with the STFT features, short time for it, and so on, then K nearest neighborhood, <coughs> LD classifier. They got 82.29 percent classification accuracy for the four study classes. And Bang and others to attend, they use video for second 62 channels, minimum redundancy maximum relevance uh, with support vector machine classified. And they got 66.5 percent classification accuracy for the four classes. And uh, then proposed method in 2014, that is with audio video stimulus of two seconds uh, with the one channel is a multi wavelet transform. And multi class support vector machine classified provide 91.04 percent classification accuracy. So, this is the conclusion of this entire talk. Uh, this area measured from the trace of analytic IMFs, uh, which have circular pattern in the complex plane, can be used as an indicator of the epilepsy 
and there is a study for there is a discrimination between normal and CGRG signals and bandwidth parameters bandwidth due to AM bandwidth due to FM of the IMFs are very useful uh, for classifying CGRG and non CGRG signals and uh, together with least square support vector machine classify these features uh, with more like we will come from the provided the highest classification accuracy as compared to the other methods other kernel functions and uh, we have also proposed a patient specific system for detection of epilepsy seizures from EG signals and the strategic area which we obtained by using moving window of a smaller size on attic IMFs can provide good detection performance for rule based detection of the epilepsy seizures from EG signals and time frequency image representation help us to possible uh, help us to compute histogram based features uh, of each sub images of EG signals corresponding to different frequency bands of the rhythms and the histogram based features are very effective for automated sleep state classification from EG signals and the classification results so that modelled wavelet kernel function of multi class is by support vector machine classifier can provide 92.93% classification accuracy in the sleep state classification using EG signals. And the mean standard deviation of the Euclidean distances based on the three dimensional <coughs> space representative reconstruction of sub signals can be useful to measure the emotional changes of the brain. And the classification results so that the modulate wavelet kernel function of multi classes by support vector machine classifier with CL multi wavelet. Uh, had provided 91.04% classification accuracy for the classification of emotions uh, using single channel EG signals. Uh, thank you very much. So, any of the participants, uh, if you have any query, doubt, question, please write on the chat box or either may unmute and ask, please. We have time also, half an hour time is there. So we can <laughs> use your questions and answers. Sir. Please, if all the participants, please. Uh, that was very interesting topics and a lot of research is going on. And you may can explore also if you are looking that way. Sir, one thing uh, just from my side, like, uh, uh, especially when I was attending your uh, lecture, I was very interested to see the the way you have connected the signal with the dream, <laughs> with the Ravan and with all those things that are really very really interesting. So how uh, the, the data set description you already given like many uh, sleeping stages, what they are like S1 to S5 and those things. Other than that data set, are there any other uh, the similar data set that can uh, go for multi class classification of the sleeping stages. Yeah, that is actually this database, whatever uh, uh, is uh, physionet that we have studied, that is very old database. Okay, yes, sir. And, uh, uh, for Indians, sleep pattern is different. Uh, for Western or uh, European or American, they are actually sleep pattern different. In other words, uh, like uh, our, uh, maybe like uh, our brain is different. Uh, their brains are different. They say different, uh, like uh, whatever study we are doing, that is, uh, it is uh, the database that is, they have recorded. But one of the now actually, I am spending a lot of time uh, for this, uh, and uh, this is actually one of my plan, uh, short term plan quickly. This all databases should be available for Indian society, uh, for like Indian people. Like sleep stages data is not uh, publicly available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very less work is done. But now in India, biomedical uh, research is not like earlier. Uh, it yes, has yes. like a lot of work is going on these days. We have got very good groups in India and now research is actually taking good direction and uh, very soon uh, really, sir. Uh, we have got very good project also this ICMR uh, it has funding more than one crore. So now we have good facilities and very soon we will have this uh, database. 
but the good thing is that whatever database actually they have recorded uh, if even this physionet yes, according yes, to our the standard they recorded this database from night 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the morning okay and sir. this is five hours time is uh, perfectly uh, suitable for covering the all sleep stages and that is what when i was in school uh, my teachers used to tell <laughs> healthy person should sleep only for five hours yes sir yes sir and five hours time is actually sufficient to uh, have complete uh, this sleep stages uh, you can have complete sleep five hours time but these days, even you see uh, the notebooks of the kids, they say eight hours time is sleeping. I don't know from where this word has come, but when I go through literature research, then five hours time is sufficient. And our teachers used to tell same thing. Yes, but sir. These days, uh, some people say eight hours, nine hours is sleeping. So sometimes it's nearly half day. Yes, yes, sir. So uh, now uh, this actually uh, data ha data needs to be recorded and there is no Indian database, but a lot of now AIMS, strong groups are there, AIMS, Delhi, uh, IIT Delhi, uh, a lot of actually work is going on, but we need uh, people who are really uh, interested, just not really, just, people, really, just uh, for long term they want to. Sir, it is also possible like a multi uh, model analysis if we have a uh, various kind of data yeah. means uh, uh, we are uh, classifying the stage based on uh, the, the 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 signal eye eye movement yeah. similarly another physiological value if you can calculate and the output of both the model we can yeah this eye movement recently one of my collaborator he has uh, come up with the database of eye movement with the muscles Oh. You can take it, sir. You can take it, sir. So muscle, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> muscles actually, muscles will also change when you, you know move your eyes. Your muscles yes. also. So he has different but digestion. Please, please, sir. Hello? Yes, yes. So this multimodality like uh, eye movements, so this EOG signal and uh, muscle signals, both will change. So that uh, multimodal, if we can use that, it will be more reliable. Yes, sir, Even yes, sir. if you have seen the epilepsy also, I, in one of the part, I have used the digital video. Yes, sir. Video EEG. And even if you go to good hospitals, uh, they don't say the EEG room, they also write video EEG. Video EEG, yes, sir. Video. So EEG is one model T and the video also another model. Sometimes you have epilepsy, so you have some uh, 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 some symptoms of epilepsy. You have vibrations, uh, no, your hands will move. So that actually uh, people want to use accelerometer. From the accelerometer, they generate some signal and uh, they also use video. So then these doctors, they confirm that this is really epilepsy because EEG signal may be abnormal due to other, other activities also. Quite possible, so sir. We always need model, multi-model analysis. Yes, sir. In order to uh, confirm that uh, person, uh, presence of some disease. Even this emotions, uh, EEG signal is one kind of, but ECG is also commonly used. <laughs> Yes, sir. 85% uh, songs, if you see, uh, they are based on the heart. Okay, sir. Uh, in any language. It, the, the, sometimes they are not meaningful. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to understand meaning. You just for, it is just for emotions. You should feel happy. Oh, yes, sir. True, sir. True. There is one movie, uh, Dil to Pagal Hai. How a uh, person <laughs> become mad with the heart. <laughs> person can become made due to brain. 
but yes, uh, such uh, uh, such kind of actually so heart is also playing role for emotion so some of work actually we are doing where brain and heart both we are combining so when you are happy then your heart is also like a very light happy when you are sad then heart is also actually so there is some feedback mechanism and heart is also not light like a happy emotion so emotions are also associated with the heart always sir always right. so sir thank you like uh, the feedback any the other questions please uh, if you have any question otherwise we are going to end the session please participate i actually try to come i completed i thought uh, there will be uh, questions that is why otherwise i could have finished by you know, i can go for more but i, I also know. expecting uh, because the participant yeah, asked a lot of questions uh, uh, that's why i was i am also expecting because that was covered you have covered many dimensions uh, in the lecture uh, in actually if you see the like uh, uh, there is saying in villages jaisa khaoge ann waisa hoga man but yes, that nobody has studied that man using eeg signals <laughs> <laughs> जैसा पियोगे पानी वैसी होगी पानी पानी बट नो बडी हैज स्टडी यूजिंग स्पीच सिग्नल्स मेनी थिंग्स आर ओपन रिसर्च एरिया सर एंड वी नीड टू जनरेट द डेटा एंड वी नीड टू वैलिडेट इट ओनली या इंडिया इज रिच एक्चुअली प्लेस इफ यू फॉर रिसर्च इन नथिंग कैन बी देयर मोर बेटर देन इंडिया स्पेशली विलेजेस विलेज ऑल द ओल्ड सेइंग्स लाइक यू आर यूजिंग इट्स ओपन रिसर्च एरिया आई थिंक इट इज ओपन रिसर्च एरिया actually they used to their life was research oriented like yeah. the grandmothers they never decided what will be the food tomorrow so morning they used to get up and they used to see the weather and they used to predict so this particular food will be better today then they used to instruct to the family today you make this food <laughs> so prediction was there yes 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 i don't know right or wrong but at least uh, some probability was there Pro prediction yes always always The system was so flexible; it is not strictly the need to follow every day like that. It was thing. scientific, and nobody used to go outside for food. And uh, food means uh, they used to see the weather and they used to prepare food themselves. Mm. Yes, sir. So the feedback I am just uh, just seeing everybody really enjoyed and the great yeah. session it was. So, like sir, uh, as usual, every session uh, really nice to listen because. the beauty thing is that you always try to connect the our regular life experience and that is happening with the technology and you try to explain the things in that way really great sir really really it's a learning for us always always how to prepare the lecture and how to deliver how to connect so many things you have discussed in the session i don't need to explain all the data set data set descriptions signals mathematics in balance way you have concluded and i'm damn sure it is it is really a very fruitful to all the participants sir so uh, sir thank you from my side and uh, i think uh, very much. we can end up the session sir yeah, thank you very much to all the participants and uh, uh, i will share this slide to dr vivek ji and i think uh, he will I, I will i will i will forward so yes any questions queries you please feel free to write me thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you thank you so dear participant uh, we i have just shared the attendance and uh, uh, we will meet again uh, uh, 3 pm sharp we, we will start our quiz another discussion may be there so 3 pm we are going to meet again attendance link i have just shared there will be around 25 questions in 30 minutes very 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 simple questions are there based on the lectures and content have been covered don't worry about that one <laughs>